So the first one is a case that came out. I think the judgment was on the 4th of October. Uh, Ray Clough, and forgive my pronunciation, but Belechens, if I'm not mistaken, uh, versus Boncolo and 70 others. So this is a Joburg case. Um, yeah, sure. So this, this was quite an interesting one. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, do you want to start? Uh, do you want to start, Nick? Yeah. So, so let's just um, set up sort of the premise. So, so it's an eviction application. It's going through the High Court of Johannesburg. Um, what was interesting about this particular case? Uh, it's obviously an eviction dealing with, I mean, at least seventy people. So, it's a fairly large eviction. Um, we're talking about a, a, a camp situation where people are living really bare bones here. Um, but what was what was of real importance and, and a point of this particular case was the people that were living on this particular property were also functioning or running a business from this particular property uh, in the sense that they were uh, you you guys would have seen them if you live in Joburg they were recyclers so those guys that are on the side of the road riding trolleys picking up stuff and taking them to recycling plants that is how the people on this particular property derived their income and derived a livelihood for themselves yeah um, well, I suppose that I suppose that's the whole, it's almost like the reason that PI exists. Uh, yeah. So if you look at our eviction legislation, I mean, it's, it's, it's people that would be rendered homeless, people that are trying to make a living, so honest, decent people. But yeah, it's not necessarily all, all legal living in the right place. There are, yeah, I mean, they're just trying to survive. Yeah. And, and so a big part of this particular case was um, you know, the, the fact that these people were using the property to derive a livelihood for themselves and uh, a big part of the, uh, you know, opposition to the eviction in the circumstances was that if they were evicted from the premises, they may be relocated somewhere where they could no longer continue their livelihood in the circumstances. Uh, and so this is a big factor which was brought in by the particular tenant. Um, we wanted to, to have a look at it because ultimately, what the court held was that the eviction could go through, but it actually added a little, uh, a couple of conditions which were attached yeah. to the eviction order, which do interest us as as uh, as property attorneys. Yeah. Absolutely, <clears throat> and I mean it's and I, I saw some articles being written on this court case, and it's it's crazy how divisive it is. And I suppose for us as attorneys, um, you know, it's, it's very important. Whereas maybe for the layperson on the street. Um, it doesn't necessarily impact them all that much, but I mean, the scathing remarks by some legal practitioners versus uh, the supportive remarks by certain organizations. And I mean, it, I, I suppose it just came down to economical right. If a person is to be removed from a property because he's not lawfully there, um, is can they actually have an expectation to be put on a property where they can also exercise the economical rights as opposed to just uh, residential rights. And here where I'm going to challenge you to the comparison is we speaking about economical rights, but a few weeks ago, we also spoke about a court case where the residents or occupiers aren't allowed to choose for simply things like convenience or uh, preference. Yeah, they're not actually allowed to choose whether they prefer the alternative accommodation or not. So it's very interesting. Like, how, how do you kind of balance what's, a, you know, something out of preference versus like a dire need that's economical rights? Because, I mean, that line can get very blurry. Yeah. And look, I, uh, part of, the, part of the, the thing I think that you and I deal with, you know, every day <clears throat> is uh, in as much as, you know, there's a process for evictions to occur. Um, there's always going to be a blurry line at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And it's part of the reason that that Pi, you know, sort of says you've got to take into consideration all relevant factors, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it seems that the, you know, what the court is doing in this particular case, because even though they've, you know, they've ordered the eviction, and they've, they've, you know, in this particular case, there was municipal engagement where the municipality mm -hmm. had alternative land, which, which people could be re relocated to, um, the court even went a step further to try and sort of place a condition on the on the municipality to ensure that there would be some level of economic activity for these people or the ability, um, the ability. to continue yeah. their economic activity on this property, um, mm. which is fascinating for us. You know, again, 
when it comes to evictions and and this is the reason you know people can't go through evictions through the tribunal tribunal's got no jurisdiction to do it it's got to go through a court it's got to have judicial oversight sure. and these are the reasons that judicial oversight is necessary in the circumstances to try and take into account these relevant factors and make sure that you know even though you're doing an ejectment people are being moved to to another piece of property um are there other factors that have to be taken into account to ensure that a just and equitable order is ultimately given for these people absolutely and where and where i have to be critical of some of the scathing articles so i think there's basically an opinion on every side to this because on the scathing articles i have to be critical it you know it, it was almost fear-mongering to the point where now the owner needs to bear this front uh, the court never said the owner needs to bear this front the court actually granted the eviction order it just did so with uh, uh, um, an order to, uh, against the municipality that they would have to provide particular alternative um, alternative accommodation so for you know for the people you know trying to to scare landowners not not so much not on the way that the judgment the the ultimate effect of the judgment may be a different story but the reality is the judge wasn't trying to place this burden on owners mm -hmm. um the, the problem the problem i see is the, the municipality's capacity is already um capped uh, their capacity to actually provide alternative accommodation is almost non-existent uh, to now add extra conditions does create a bit of a disconnect between, you know, the economic realities of, you know, what we're capable of. It's it's like, you know, telling the government to stop crime. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, how do you how do you just make an order of court saying stop? It's, it's you know, effectively, is it actually possible? And obviously, the concern is the municipality is now going to run around for these 70 respondents uh, going to comply potentially. But what about the next 70 and the next 70 and the next yeah. 70? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it does come with its own problems, I have to admit. And I don't entirely agree, honestly, that PI was intended to protect economic rights. Um, but th it is a d debatable matter. Um, yeah. And I mean, then again, you also mentioned zoning and stuff like that and whether that's also taken into account. Yeah, look, look, I didn't want to touch on, you know, legalities and, and bylaws. You know, we, we don't really know what the, the situation is there. Um, but I but I think I'm with you. The, the takeaway for me, um, you know, the, the court is again upholding, you know, the, the rights of the landowner, making right. sure that they can get back their property. That's fantastic. Um, again, the you know we've got a, a strong precedent there for for our landowners, um, sure. but then again, as you say, uh, the the factors that come in now when the eviction occurs, you know sure. that's that's interesting for us. And unfortunately, I, I am inclined to agree with you. You know, ultimately, even though the, the an order wasn't made against the landlord to to do anything alternative to accommodation or or you know providing an economic basis for these guys. Um, it's there's still some level of the landlord's going to have to wait, you know, for mm. the municipality to get the land in place, mm. you know, and, and land that fits the conditions. So, so sure. it does affect our landowner. Uh, at yeah. The end of that. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. So that's that's just our weekly case update. Um, then we've got.